In today's video, we'll be tackling this apocalyptic loop where there are shards coming in from random directions. We'll be using geometry nodes and we're going to keep it step by step. So let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we'll select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now we'll press shift and search for a cube. And the reason why we're using the cube instead of the default cube is because we can change the X, Y and Z axis separately without having another node. So let's Let's change the x to something like 5 as well as the z to something like 5 and then we'll have y equal to the length at which we want it to loop so i'm going to go with 10 units if you want to have a longer loop you can make this longer as well i'm going to go with just 10 for now now if we switch over to the wireframe view you can see that there clearly isn't too much geometry so to increase the amount of geometry we can press shift a and search for a subdivide mesh node now i want to subdivide it to a level of 3 so that we have quite good geometry and of course if you actually take a look at each of these faces by pressing 7 you can see that they're not square and you can fix that simply by increasing the number of vertices on the Y because the scaling on the Y is different from the X and the Z. So even the vertices should be like that. However, I'm going to keep it at two itself for now and I'll continue with the next part. So I need to create some amount of randomness within this particular mesh. So to create randomness, the first thing that we can do is actually set the position according to some noise. So let's search for a set position node, plug that in after the subdivide mesh. And for the offset, let's use a noise texture. Now remember the noise texture goes from zero to one, which means it's centered around point Five, so everything's going to shift up by 0.5. I don't want that. So I'm going to have to use a subtract node, which is going to be a vector math node switched from add to subtract and plug this into the first socket. And the second one, I can make 0.5 on all the axes so that it's centered around zero. Next, I need to scale this up by a bit. So I'll press shift A and search for another vector math node. And this time I'll change it from add to scale so that I can actually scale up the effect. For now, we'll keep the scale at one and all of these values just like this so that we can see what each of it does. When we plug this into the offset, you can see that we have this sort of a distortion to the cube. And if you want to increase the amount of distortion or at least the scale of the distortion, you can play around with the scale of the noise texture. So maybe I'll just scale it up to some random value, maybe 8.54. Then I'll scale it up using this scale node to actually increase the effect. As you can see, it's the strength that's actually being scaled up. So maybe a value of 2.32 is what I'll go with. Now, even though we have it scaled, we can actually increase the randomness even more by pressing shift A and searching for a triangulate node, plugging that in and then actually using a dual mesh node to convert it into nice hexagonal shapes instead of these triangles. So now we have the dual mesh node, but we can increase the randomness even more by merging them together. So I'll press shift A and search for a merge by distance node and I'll plug that in after the dual mesh and I'll increase the merging distance up till I get something that I'm happy with. I'll go with a value of 0.93. Now I'll take this dual mesh node and press shift D and plug it in after the merge by distance again so that we convert these back to those hexagonal shapes wherever possible. Now if we switch back to the solid viewport shading you see we have just a solid block but I want those shards so I'm going to do that by converting this into a curve followed by converting it to a mesh again. So let's search for a mesh to curve node and after plugging that in let's search for a curve to mesh node. Now essentially this profile curve is what's going to allow us to create those shards. So let's press shift A and search for a curve line and by using random values in the curve line, we can create really cool shards. So let's start by giving it some thickness by increasing this X value. Maybe a value of 0.5 will be good. Then let's just increase the randomness by playing around with this Z value, maybe a value of 4.6. And don't forget that you can always change these up by playing around with the start values and things like that as well. So maybe I'll start it on the Z at a value of 1.3, which is giving me really good shards. Now the problem with these shards is that they're still two dimensional planes. To give them even more thickness, I'll press Shift A and and search for an extrude mesh node. Now this extrude mesh is gonna have a default shading of smooth, which is really hard to tell. So the first thing that I want to do is decrease the offset scale to 0.12 and I'll switch off individual as well. Now to actually change it from the smooth shading to a solid shading, I'll have to use a set shade smooth node itself, but I'll just switch off the shade smooth. Now that we have it as flat shading, you can actually tell that these shards are now hollow. There's no back face and that's why you can see that they're still made up of simple planes and they're not actual solid objects. So to make them solid objects, we can simply join in the original mesh before extrusion. So let's search for a joint geometry, plug that in here and take the original mesh and plug that in. Now, even though this looks perfect, you might encounter shading errors later on because the normals will be flipped in this case. So we can fix that by searching for a flip faces node and plugging that in after curve to mesh. This will prevent any issues that we might face in the future. Now let's create the perfect loop. For this to loop, we have to set up our entire scene and camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to 
clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now we'll press 0 to go into our camera view and we'll just press G Z to lift it up above the ground plane. We have to add in a ground plane as well. So let's press Shift A and search for a mesh plane and we'll scale this up to the size of our cube, which was a total length of 10 units, which means we have to scale the plane up by 5 units to make it match with the size of our cube. Now we can go back to our camera view, select the camera and just press G Y and move it back to the start of our cube again, which will be minus 5 meters. Now to create the loop, let's select both the plane and the cube and press Alt D followed by Y and then type in the length of the cube, which was 10 units and then press enter. Now to repeat the action, you can just press Shift R and that'll create another variation even further ahead. You can do that once again, just to make sure that the loop is a perfect loop. Similarly, you also require something at the back because many of these faces are also coming in front. These shards do come in front and they will intersect with the camera's position. So let's select these and then press Alt D Y minus 10. And now we should have everything necessary to create the perfect loop. We can position the camera exactly to wherever we want it. And then let's set our animation defaults. Let's go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and end frame at 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm gonna choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm gonna change the container to MPEG4 and output quality, I'm gonna choose perceptually lossless. Then I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and with the camera selected, I'll tap I, location. Then on the last frame, which is frame 150, I'll just press G, Y, followed by the length of the cube, which was 10 units. And then I'll press enter. I location. Now, if you play the animation, it starts off slow, speeds up in the middle and then slows down again at the end. So to fix that, I'll just expand this, come down here and press T linear. And that way we should get a perfectly smooth loop. Now, in case your camera is encountering situations like this, where it's perfectly hitting these objects, you can either take the camera and go to the object properties and use these Delta transforms to just move it on the Z axis without having to redo all of the keyframes. Or you can actually play around with the geometry nodes section and play around with the values of these curved lines and things like that. However, I think for the time being, just changing this Z value of my camera down to something like this is good enough. And it creates a really nice loop where I'm not encountering any of these obstacles and it's passing through perfectly. Now we can start off with the actual materials and the backgrounds. So for the materials in our geometry node tree, we first have to set material. So let's press shift A and search for a set material node, plug that in after the set shade smooth and choose the default material. Then we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections, after which we'll switch our viewport shading to rendered so that we can actually see the changes. Then we'll select the default light and just hide it for the time being after which we'll add in some external light source and we're not going to use the world light because if we make this world all the way to white or whatever all of these objects are also going to be affected by that light so instead of doing that i'm going to keep this world at black but for the time being just to help see we'll keep it at some value like this and then i'll press shift a and search for a mesh cylinder. Now I'll rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees and I'll just scale it up until it's completely outside the cube. To help see everything better, you can stay in object mode itself and you can see that initially everything is not present within it. But as you increase the scale, you can encapsulate everything. And then to encapsulate everything on the y-axis as well, just press S, Y, followed by any large number. It doesn't matter. Once you have that set up, you can go back to the shader editor as well as a viewport shading of rendered and add in a new material for it. For this material, I'm simply going to go to the emission and increase the emission to a bright color and increase the emission strength to something like 10. This will act as our light source so we can set the mood of the entire environment by playing around with this. If you make it a reddish color, it'll be more apocalyptic. You can have it as a nice sunset by making it this orangish vibe and that's what I'm going to go for today. Then I'm also going to go to my camera properties by selecting the camera, going to the object data properties over here and I'll reduce the focal length to 25 millimeters so that it becomes much more wide angle and I'll go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to 1. That way I won't get distracted with anything outside my camera view. Now to give the material for the actual shards, I can select it and we already set the default material. And because we use the default cube, the default material will be selected by itself. Now we're going to go ahead and just increase the metallic all the way to one and I'll reduce the roughness to maybe 0.3. Then for the floor, I'm going to select the floor, press this plus button to create a new material, make it completely metallic, change the base color to be a little darker. And for the roughness, I'm going to use a noise texture. So let's search for a noise texture and plug the color into the rough 
roughness. For better control over the noise texture, I'm going to use a color ramp node and I'll plug that in after the noise texture. I'll bring the black in quite a bit and I'll bring the white in quite a bit and I'll change the black from a value of 0 to a value of 0 0.1 so that it's not completely reflective. Similarly, for the white, I'm going to change it from a value of 1 to a value of 0 0.7 so that it's not completely non-reflective. Now you can scale it up to see what you created, but instead of playing around with this scale, I'm going to actually select it and press Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now I can switch from generated to object and I can increase the scale on just the x-axis to create these nice stretched out lines like a brushed metal. To make the brushed metal effect even more, I'm going to increase the detail all the way to 15 and start increasing the roughness till I get exactly what I want. And I think something like this looks good enough. Next, I want there to be some sort of light present right at the end. So I'm going to again unhide the default light and press Alt G to clear its location. Then I'll press G Z to lift it up and to actually see where it is, I'll switch on overlays and then I'll press G Y to move it all the way back. Now to get this light to actually overpower everything to create the perfect loop, I'm actually going to switch on volumetrics by switching from object to world over here and then pressing shift A and searching for a volume scatter. Now I can plug this into the volume, but I'll have to reduce the density down to something like 0.1 and that way we'll have some nice volume present everywhere. So let's just grab this even further on the Y axis till we get some nice shadows as well. And we can reduce the radius down to zero so that it's nice and sharp. With that, my cylinder has to be a lot brighter. So let's go back to object, just increase the emission strength even more. Let's go with 100. And to make sure that this light also loops with the camera, let's just select that default light, shift select the camera or control click the camera in the outliner and then come back to the 3D viewport and press control P set parent to object. So that way the light is going to move along with the camera and it's going to become a perfectly looping animation. Now I might play around with a few of the settings just before hitting render, but essentially that's it. And once you're happy with the way it looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a fun one and it's actually a part of a scene or an environment that I was creating for an upcoming short film. I will be releasing that on this channel and I hope it's going to be something that'll be very entertaining for all of you. So I post videos every single day and until the next video comes out tomorrow, check out other videos on my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative. Creative.